Code Academy is one of the best, most well-known, and most well-established websites for learning how to code. But is it still worth it in 2021? That's the question we're going to be answering in today's video. So welcome back everybody to this new video. Today we're going to be reviewing Code Academy and before we get into the review, make sure to like and subscribe down below. We're some 50 subscribers away from being at 1k, so let's get there. Now on to the review. So we're going to be using three criteria to evaluate Code Academy. User experience, price, and value. Before we get into analyzing all of this criteria, let's talk about what Code Academy is and who it's really built for. So the real purpose of Code Academy is that it's for beginners. All the courses start from ground zero. So even when you first enter Code Academy, you'll get this tutorial which teaches you kind of the basics of code, not really syntax, but how variables work, how code updates, different stuff like that. And you can see that on the screen right now, it's just updating text in some environment that Code Academy created, but it's not really introducing you to how to code in Python, how to code in Java. And those individual courses are presented to you throughout the Code Academy library. So just for reference, today's review is going to be about the Code Academy Pro version. That is the $20 a month version as of September 10th, 2021. And that's the benchmark we're going to be using for all the criteria we're going to be talking about. All right. So for the sake of this video, I've chosen the data scientist career path. And so let's go through what a career path looks like on Code Academy. It's a little bit different from what we saw on DataCamp. So you're going to get this syllabus that shows you everything you're going to be doing in the course. So it starts with create programs using Python 3 all the way to visualizing data with matplotlib seaborn to work to working with aggregate functions and joints in SQL. And also they're going to be outlined all of these projects, portfolio projects you're going to be able to do within this course. Usually courses have five or six projects and this is amazing, but these courses are a lot longer than the courses we saw on DataCamp or Free Code Camp even. So after we get through the syllabus, you'll see we have this list of resources. So this list of resources is super helpful. It gives you IDEs, documentation, and even books you can use to help you throughout your journey of the course. This really feels like a college course. It's like you're getting recommended literature, documentation, a bunch of resources. So this is really well done by the Code Academy team. I love it. There are so many resources that are outlined here. And while these books aren't provided for free, obviously they're 40, 50, to $60 books. It's really nice to get an outline of what resources can help you or me understand this course more in depth. So really well done. Now the final thing we see in this course outline is the goals of each unit. So the first unit is understanding what data science is, recognizing the process data scientists use, and identifying various applications for data science. This is what you would want to see in the beginning of the course. What are the goals for the first chapter, the first unit? What do we want to understand before we understand all the technical jargon, all the code? So this is really great. All right, so this is what a basic lesson looks like. You're going to have the information on the side, instructions, concept review, community forums. So you're going to have this little introduction at the top. So this is a Hello World program, very basic. And then we're going to have some instructions. Pretty standard when it comes to coding websites. Almost every coding website has a structure where you have the instructions, your coding environment, and then your output. I would say the design here and the user experience is great. The dark mode looks really nice. The contrast between the instructions, the coding environment, and the output. It's just a really good looking website. And even if we go to the home page really quick, if we just go to the home page, the colors they use, they're really nice. The beige background, everything's calming. The design is great. The 
engineers who worked on the design did an, a phenomenal job. It's very simple, very easy to use, and it's not confusing at all. So the design is great for the website. Back to the lesson. Let's say we do something wrong here. All right, so we leave out a quotation mark. Let's see what the IDE gives us. So if we run, we get an error in the output, but we don't get an error, we don't get a hint of what we did wrong, all right? Let's say I'm a complete beginner. I'm like, I don't know that a quotation mark needs to be here. I don't know what to do. And in other coding resources, other websites, there will be a small error that says, did you check X, Y, and Z? Did you leave a quotation here? Did you make sure to leave a semicolon here if we're in Java or JavaScript? So this is something that I want to see Code Academy maybe work on. Give a hint for the beginners because they don't know these basic things. This is the first program for Python. So the first program has to be super straightforward, and it is, but we need to account for errors that beginners might make. Let's go back to the course outline and let's go to a more advanced data science course and see what that looks like. So this is something I absolutely love about Code Academy. Literally a comic to describe regular expressions. For me, regex is one of the hardest things I had to learn when I was learning Python. And a comic is a great way to describe it. Take a second to just read this. So something really cool about Code Academy is you might have a lesson, an article, and then usually you'll have a quiz. So let's go to the quiz and see what that looks like. So here we have a quiz. This is a quiz about all the information that was covered in the topic. I think quizzes are a great way to review the information that you learned previously, not just through writing code, but just through true or false questions. I'm in college right now taking a class about object-oriented programming. We have a quiz once a week, and it's really good to keep you on top of your information, not only through implementing it in code, but just basic question and answering, because that's how tests are going to look like in college, and that's how maybe coding interviews might look in college. All right, so now we're in the project section. For me, this is the most exciting part. I love taking the information I learn in these courses and implementing them into projects and then uploading them on GitHub, getting comments from my friends, and just applying the information I learned. I think that's super, super important when it comes to coding courses. All right, so this project here is completely optional, but let's take a look and see what it's all about. So we need to download this linear regression project and we'll open it here. I'm giving you guys special access. All right, so here is the linear regression project. Now, this is the unsolved part of the project. There's a solution that's included in the file, so if you so you can see that you did everything right. This shows us how much effort the Code Academy team put into these course tracks. There are a bunch of different course tracks from full stack engineer to front end to back end to data science and all of these courses individually have more than 60 projects each. This specific course has 64 projects. Each of them are formatted like this. So there are so many resources for you just within the Code Academy environment. It's ridiculous to think that $20 is too much. $20 a month for this type of information with potential discounts is 100% worth it. So this IPYNB file will walk you through what linear regression is, how to calculate it, how to model it, and then you'll be able to compare your answer to the solution and see if you did a good job. These projects are insanely useful resources, and if you use Code Academy, definitely use all of their projects. One small last thing, they also have in resources these really cool cheat sheets, projects, articles, and blogs, and you guys can check that out on your own. That doesn't require the pro version, but I wanna take a look at these cheat sheets really quick. Let's take a look at a Python cheat sheet. Let's see, CS101, Introduction to Programming. Let's see what this cheat sheet is all about. So this is all about the basics of Python. This is so useful, you guys. Even if you have 
Code Academy, the free version. And if you are able to access these cheat sheets, definitely try to download them and save them somewhere. These are super, super useful for beginner coders. And there are a bunch of sections here, all the topic overviews, classes, dictionaries, modules, strings. I am just blown away by the vast amount of resources provided by Code Academy. You need to take advantage of this for sure. One last thing we should definitely look at is Code Academy's YouTube channel. They have a bunch of stuff about tips of being a better developer to coding interview stuff, what recruiters are looking for. They have a bunch of really helpful YouTube videos. So maybe check those out too. Those could supplement some of the stuff that you're doing on the Code Academy website if you're missing anything. All right, so now after we've seen all of this stuff, we've taken it all in, it, I know it was a lot. Let's talk about the user experience. And when we talk about user experience, we really talk about three main questions. Was it easy to use? Was it a memorable experience? And was the content engaging? Code Academy was definitely 100% easy to use. The design was great. Was the experience memorable? The colors, the sheer amount of content, and the vast variety of resources that Code Academy has leads me to say that it was 100% a memorable experience. I was blown away by the amount of courses, the amount of projects per course, just so much information that a beginner coder could soak all in if they took advantage of this resource. And the content was 100% engaging. I would say I would like to see some videos, more videos in the content, as I see a lot more videos in Datacamp and free code camp than I see in Code Academy, but the content overall was pretty engaging. So for user experience, I would give Code Academy an eight and a half out of 10, just because I wanna see more videos and potentially other types of content just besides articles and text. It's very text heavy. So as I said before, we're reviewing the $20 version and there are really two versions the free version and the $20 version. Now, access to content, resources, blogs, chats, it's all limited in the free version. So if you're actually going to be using Code Academy, I suggest using the $20 version. Try it out, it's a seven day free trial, you can cancel it whenever you want, but try it out before you just decide with going with the free version, because the $20 a month version opens so many doors up for the user. Personally, if you're asking me, I would pay $20 a month to use Code Academy. Would I do it over a sustained period of time of more than a year? Maybe not. I would try to use this resource for as long as I saw fit, for as long as I could take advantage of the resources, but I wouldn't use this resource for a long period of time. For beginners, you wanna learn how to code, get into the hang of things, and then start doing stuff on your own without really courses, trying to learn on your own because that's how it's going to be in the real world when, when you need to learn real programming languages on your own, do your own projects that are not within the bounds of a course. You need to unlock your own creativity and make projects on your own will, on your own creative mind. So now, let's answer the question we originally posed at the beginning of the video. Is Code Academy worth it in 2021? The answer is a little bit complex. I would say yes, but not for too long. A lot of times when I talk to my peers and people who comment on my videos, they say that they feel like they're getting stuck in this course loop where they just feel comfortable being in these courses and just take course after course after course, and they're not absorbing the information that they're learning. It's really important when you take courses that you understand that once you're done with that course, you have to apply that knowledge outside of the course by doing projects, uh, whether that be physical projects applying that code, whether, whether it be software, whatever it may be, you need to take that information and learn outside the course environment. In the real world, you're not gonna have courses to aid you. You're gonna have yourself, Stack Overflow, and your code base. It's really important to take notes while you're learning in these courses so you can reference them later and you don't have to keep coming back to the course. So with Code Academy, there's so many resources you can take advantage of. Take advantage of those resources and pull them outside that Code Academy environment and use them. That's the greatest advice I could give you. So I hope you guys took insight from this video. 
I hope this maybe convinced you to either use Code Academy or maybe not use Code Academy if it's not your learning style. Make sure to like and subscribe down below, leaving any thoughts about Code Academy, any thoughts about this video, anything. I'd love to answer it down below. For now, I'll see you guys in the next video.